Hey guys, this is a, a message to all the dads out there that um, have a special needs kid and um, to, to offer some sort of encouragement and to, to share just a walk in the journey that I've been on and um, the, the highs and the lows and to, to try and offer some, some form of encouragement really. So, you know, Erin is seven in will be seven this year she's about six and a half now and uh, the condition that erin has is it's a chromosome disorder called chromosome 15q duplication syndrome also abbreviated to dupe 15q so um, a portion of the the q arm of the 15th chromosome has been duplicated and what that results in is a child that has severe cognitive and uh, physical delay and a lot of the kids have have seizures uh, so epilepsy has to be kept under control um, <clears throat> there's uh, you know autism that is is another part of the the condition as well so autistic behavior um, and just overall um, you know very very severe delays so Erin <laughs> is non-verbal at six and a half years old and um, can't utter a single word yet but it's weird though you know I well I as her dad and then her mother Tracy we we kind of understand her language anyway and we understand her hand gestures and the little sort of squeaks and noises that she makes and um, if she's happy she gets excited she she makes squeaky noises and if she's sad, she just cries and she moans and yeah, we kind of more or less know what to do, you know. So, you know, Erin was born typical by all accounts. Um, there was nothing to indicate that she was, that she had some sort of condition. They didn't pick up anything on the, on the scans when Tracy was pregnant. And, and she's our first child as well. So we were, we were so excited. I mean, we, we had... You know, you build up these dreams, especially as a father. Um, you, you start imagining what your child's going to be like in in a few months, in a year, in a few years. And you wonder when she's going to look at you and, and smile for the first time. And then you wonder when she's going to say her first words. So, yeah, she was six months old and we went for a checkup. And the, the pediatrician said, look, um, uh, there's, there's a few delays here. Um, Erin's not reaching all her milestones, so maybe we should have some tests done. And so that was the first time we we heard of anything untowards about about Erin's con you know uh, developments. We we thought up until that point she was perfectly fine. So it was a bit of a shock, a bit of a surprise for us. And um, so, but we didn't panic. We we just thought, well, you know, maybe. You know, all kids develop at different different stages, and some are quicker than others. Anyway, we started going for tests, and um, gradually, as we as we had more and more tests done, that's when we realised that we could be dealing with something relatively serious here, and um, and it, and it started to to just create a bit of uncertainty, and and um, we started to feel a bit of a bit the beginning of becoming a bit overwhelmed by things anyhow so we had ct scans eegs ecgs uh the the works blood samples all these things on poor little erin here and the long and short of it is it, it was seven months it was a, a month after her first birthday when we finally got a diagnosis as to what erin's condition was and it was kind of by chance actually we had been seeing a neuro pediatrician in cape town and um she was well she is amazing um and the doctor had gone to a, a symposium of sorts and there was a guest speaker at another doctor talking about chromosome disorders and um she just started mentioning the all these symptoms and signs that um, and, and the doctor realized that, hey, that's probably what Erin's got. So, so we did a specific chromosome test and we discovered that it was, it's Erin's 15th chromosome that has been affected by, um, well, the genetic 
disorder, I guess, a mutation, if you will. And it's not something that was passed on from from either one of us, from mom or dad. Um, it was just a pure genetic fluke. So um, she, she's a lucky bag baby, I guess you could say. Um, let me just get it back up here. She's sliding down a bit. Come here, come, just come sit here with me. You've got this thing there. <clears throat> this thing on yo Erin I think we need to change the batteries on this thing so yo th this is one of those uh, little teddy bear things that you, you can press it and, it, and it, it makes nice little tunes and it's one of the things that we know that Erin likes and it calms her down <laughs> it's kind of it's lost its tune yo um, well maybe I'll just play it for you anyway because it seems to be keeping you quite happy so let's put that back on Erin there you go. See, we we learn. We learn what makes them happy and what you know what solves the, the immediate crisis. And look at that. That's a happy little girl again. Hey, is that making you happy? Yeah. So we we got the diagnosis, and I remember on that day, as a guy, as a as a father, my first. Feelings, the first emotions I got when we were sitting in the doctor's office. I think I went in there um, kind of hoping to expect some good news or something not quite as severe as the news we got. And when, when, when I first heard that our daughter has this chromosome disorder, I think for a moment I was numb and um, I, I kind of felt partially paralyzed, I guess. And I really had no clue how to digest that information. I, I didn't cry. I didn't. I just went numb. And um, this is our, our only child at the time. Our first child. And, and now I've been given this news. That the rest of her life is affected. In one in one little moments I, I had to suddenly transform this future this this idea that I had for my daughter and into something that I didn't know um, sorry it's it's raining here in Cape Town finally um, and I just saw a big flash of lightning outside you might hear the thunder just now I don't know if you could hear that it's amazing beautiful anyway so you know, I've got this news and I, I just didn't know what to do. Anyway, so we drove home, the three of us, my wife, Erin and I, back to our little place and um, I got home and and then suddenly my the, the, the numbing feeling wore off and it was replaced by anger. Like a, just such an anger, hey? I, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a physical sort of guy. I like my sports and outdoor activities and that sort of thing. And um, if, I'm, if I'm faced with some sort of a problem, I, I want to be able to fix it. I think that might be sort of most guys' responses to, to, to a problem. You, you, you see something that's broken or damaged in some way and you just want to figure out a way to fix it. So, and, and now I've been given this information and I don't have a clue what to do. Uh, it's not something that is easy excuse me I don't know if you heard that hopefully not um, a little bit of wind really it wasn't me anyway so yeah you know now, now I've got to now I'm trying to digest this information and the first emotion that I had was anger so um, I was doing some DIY at home uh, prior to that and putting up like a just extending the height of our wall with with l wooden letter posts so I just took my hammer and the nails and I went ballistic for the rest of that day I just hammered and sawed sawed and cut and hammered and I put so much energy and like ferocity into building that wall and luckily it ended up looking pretty good but it, it certainly helped to have some sort of channel, somewhere just to channel those anger, those angry thoughts, you know, and in emotions. So, 
it was kind of weird. It was it was anger that was overriding um, a, a growing sense of maybe hopelessness or sadness. So yeah, but I had to deal with this anger first. So probably for the next couple of days, that was the overriding feeling was this sense of anger and um, you know, what do I do next? And suddenly a lot of questions started coming through as well. How, how do we deal with this? What is this about? And it was a lot to digest, eh? Anyway, so um, this vlog might end up being a bit too long if I share too much. So um, a, a couple of years passed and and we, we learnt a lot of things. We had a lot of questions. Um, but I'll tell you one thing, hey guys. And this is really directed to the dads out there. Um, these these little kids, you know, they, yo, they just get under your skin. They really do, hey. And I, I, kept, I kept on getting reminded that, you know, if you look at this this little pure soul they're they're pure and beautiful beautiful little kids little people and they need a man to be there they need a, a a father to to be there and to help him in any way possible um you know there's i think there's certain things that a mother can do that us men aren't particularly good at um but then there's there's also a huge role for us to play you know and um, like I've got a certain sort of bond with Erin and her mom, Tracy, has a certain bond, a different kind of bond. And um, it's important that we, we, if possible, that we stay in their lives. Eh? Um, you know, I had those feelings and those emotions too where I felt like I just wanted to run away from it all. And... and um, but the, those feelings didn't last very long. Those thoughts, I didn't give them the time of day. Because this is a special little person that, that needs me. I've got to be here for her. Um, you know, she didn't ask to come into this world. I had a big part to play in that. And I don't know, the rest is just nature, God. You know, um, there's a lot of things that are beyond our comprehension. But... I can just deal with the things I can see before me and and what I learned over the last few years is um, is it's not all that bad it's it's tough at times yes but there's also some really good stuff that can come out of this you know um, you know Erin loves cuddles and and I just love like just lying here with her now it's one of the most beautiful things you know um, you know, you, you often hear parents say to their kids, like, why are you growing up so fast? And, you know, will you still hug me when you're 10 years old? And, well, you know what? With with a, a, a child with special needs, um, you've, you've got a baby for life. So <laughs> that's one of the positive things. And um, so, Erin, man. <laughs> You know, there's funny things as well. Like, she's just farting now. And it's so funny because she's like such a beautiful little lady. And then she just lets rip like this. And so, you know, there's, there's a lot of fun things that you can enjoy and, and love and appreciate. And you know what? I, I must admit, Erin Aaron has been kind of an easy child. Um, we've been blessed in that way, you know, I know there's 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 other kids out there that have such severe conditions and It's so tough for the parents. It's so hard eh? So, you know, we're, we're walking our path and we we have to deal with the things we've got thrown at us and There's parents out there for dads you guys, you know, I don't know what sort of situation you're in Um it could be 10 times worse than what we have, but I just hope and pray that you find beautiful things to get out of it. Don't, you know, just at all at all possible, just stay with your, your kids and your, your wives and um, love them. And, you know, if you're feeling angry, go get angry. Go let out those, go let out some steam. Just, you know, 
maybe take a hammer and some nails and go hammer them into some wood or I don't know go buy some old cheap plates and cups and just go smash them somewhere I don't know you know there's so many different ways of letting out your anger go to the gym go running um so you know one of my outlets is is just getting out outdoors I go mountain biking and I I go to gym and you know I go surfing and all that sort of thing and I think that's important as well hey guys you know you've got to get out there and, and find some balance find some time for yourself um you can quite quickly get overwhelmed and caught up in your child's life and then suddenly it just feels like everything's about them but you know what I'm I'm me, I've got my life, and Erin and has her life, we're individuals, yet at the same time, I'm there for her, and I, I'm, I need to be there to be Erin's dad, um, but I also have time for myself, I go and I see my friends, I drink beers with my buddies, we go we go and have fun out in, the, in nature, riding mountain bikes and things, um, and, and also don't be shy to take your child out, eh? I, I go to the shops, I go to the hardware store with Erin, I take them with, and it's amazing. I, I I'll go to the hardware store, and if I don't take Erin, the the people that see me there, they ask, "Where's Erin? Where is she? Why didn't you bring her today?" And then the next time I go, I take Erin with, and they come and they snatch her out of my arms, and they're hugging her and loving her. I think the world needs to be exposed more to our kids with special needs. Um, I mean, you know, this to me, this is normal. You know, Erin. Erin is, is a normal little person. Yes, she might have special needs, but but she's she's our normal, you know. And I think the rest of the world also needs to realize that that um, being different is normal. You know, what is being different? Um, it's an absolute miracle if you're born with no problems on you know in this day and age. So, you know, guys, hopefully you'll be encouraged. Um, I'll, I'll put more stuff up on my YouTube channel and my goal really is just to to share what we're going through and um, hopefully more highs and lows and I want to make this about you know being positive bringing bringing positive vibes out there and sharing ideas and solutions check out some of my other videos um, I made Erin a, a really cool walker out of PVC pipes and things and I'm starting to make them for other families as well it's low cost, it's practical, I'll share the plans and you can make one too or I can make one for you if you're nearby, whatever. Yeah, so be encouraged guys, be strong, be a man, be a dad, love your kids. Cheers.